what's ripening in YouTube? Hey, I'm uh, out here at the front of the property just getting ready to plant a bunch of a uh, bunch of these guys. These are I call them eucalyptus tortellini, but they're it's like eucalyptus torreliana or something like that. I like the word tortellini, so that's what I call them. Anyway, I've got my first 50 uh, eucalyptus torrellianas or tortellinis. Um, these are really fast growing trees. Um, they're used for windbreaks around some of the citrus groves around here or further into the state. Um, but what I'm going to use them for is a little different. Um, my inspiration has been uh, Ernst Grouch. Um, he's a guy down in Brazil. If you look him up on, on YouTube, you'll find him. Um, he did a video called or video called Centropy. It was for the uh, Climate Council or whatever they did. But he's got a website. He does classes. I wish he spoke uh, English because I'd love to read some of his, uh, his articles. I can't really read them. Um, but um, I've watched his videos and I really like what he does with uh, his pioneer systems. Um, so I'm kind of using some of his ideas and some of the other agroforestry stuff that I've read. Um, I don't know if you can tell. Let's see if I can get a little further down. Um, these right here, I've got them planted in a row along this side of the bed. Those are um, ice cream bean. Inga, I'm not, they're not Inga edulis, but they're in that same family. It's a nitrogen fixing uh, tree that actually makes a fruit. The fruit's like a bean pod that tastes kind of like cotton candy. Um, but so you can see that I did those along this side of the bed. And then over here on this side, I just put in, uh, I just put these in. These are Mexican sunflower and I've done them. I basically did one at every fence post. Um, and then, and then in between each fence post, sorry about the sun here. In between each fence post, so I've got Mexican sunflower there. I've got one over there. In between each one of these, I'm going to put one of these eucalyptus. Um, supposedly, these things can grow like 15 feet in the first year. So they're really fast, kind of like moringa, but they're a little bit more, uh, a little more biomass, and uh, they'll fill in a lot faster than moringa. Moringa is kind of a, they're pretty much a wimpy tree that you can snap them really easy. But what I'm going to do with these is grow them up. I'm going to use them. So I've done the same thing with the, with the ice cream bean. You can see I've got them planted on this side of the bed. And this is kind of like a low spot. This whole thing is like a, it's a really old swale that's kind of collapsing on itself. I'm probably going to come in here and dig these deeper later. So I'm not messing with it too much. But the next, the next row isn't a swale. This is like going to be one of my main paths through here. So I'm going to do the uh, eucalyptus on each side, on the edge of each of these beds and grow up some fast shade. And uh, what I saw that, uh, that Grosh was doing in his videos was he was limbing them up as they grow because they're kind of a pioneer. He's limbing them up and he's mulching down the low branches and he's letting them grow up tall and you get that early, early high canopy. And then I guess at a certain point, he just, he just cuts them off and then starts over. But I like that idea because you get that, you get the fast shade when you have your, your baby trees in, you have kind of a post that you can grow, you can use as a trellis, you can grow beans or passion fruit or something up that. And then you just mulch them back in and, and uh, once everything's established, you don't need them anymore. Um, I really like that idea of building your own biomass. That's why I've got the Mexican sunflowers here. You see I've got them around some of my trees. I put them around here to protect, like this is a canistel tree. I put these around just to give, instead of having to come out here with the tarp if it gets cold, I tried to grow my own little winter protection. These are all going to come out. Here's another, another set. They didn't grow up as tall as I wanted to before the winter. This is a achacha, achachairu tree. Um, so th those are like early, early protection. I'm looking at these ingas and the uh, 
And the eucalyptus is uh, kind of a medium short term protection and a kind of an establishment system. And then my mainframe trees are gonna build and grow and hopefully benefit from that system. I have noticed that bananas and especially especially these seedling coconuts, like these little guys, I have some at my house. And the ones that are in some protection, like in the shade of something else when they're young, seem to thrive. They really like it. And same thing with, uh, with a lot of the young fruit trees. I found that, especially in my nursery, if I put them in like a 50% shade, they really, they really get strong fast versus putting them out and just putting them into hardcore conditions. Especially if you're growing things the way I am. I'm not using a lot of chemicals, so I'm trying to let things build up naturally. That's why I'm using the, the deep mulch here. But today's project is putting these in, so that's what I'm going to get to. Um, just wanted to share that, and uh, I'll be sharing some of my experiences with this. I don't know anyone yet that's using this exact variety for this exact purpose. So this may be something relatively new, at least for my area, and uh, I'll try to keep you updated. But look at this. Isn't that pretty? It's got this nice pink, fuzzy, hope you can see that, let's see, fuzzy pink new growth, and uh, they're just so prolific. The guy, the guy in the nursery, had, they just topped these off because they said they suck so much water. That's another thing I'm using them for is dewatering my land. And they suck so much water that they couldn't, they couldn't let them grow tall. They have to top them for the, keeping them in these little pots. So these kind of, they kind of need to go in the, in the ground right well right now um, but yeah so the other the other thing I'm doing the reason I'm putting them along my paths um, in addition to the, the the reasons I mentioned earlier is to help me kind of keep my path area less wet and I, I don't know if it's gonna have an immediate effect but it can't hurt so I'm gonna try that um, but uh, anyway I'm excited to put these in and I'll keep you updated with uh, what happens with it All right, so I just finished planting all these. Um, this part of the, this is actually the edge of my property. So I planted them closer. I'm gonna keep these more as a windbreak, at least for the short term. So these are on eight inch, or not eight inch, eight foot centers, which just lines up with the middle of each one of these uh, fence panels. And then like I was explaining earlier, <coughs> in this area, I just, planted them intermediate between my uh, trees so they, they end up being about 12 foot centers um, so that's what it looked like I just finished planting them just finished watering them in um, if you haven't done it before I, I mulch everything pretty heavy so it makes it kind of a pain in the butt to plant into the mulch and what I was doing today was I don't know if you can see what I did I already did it, but anyway, I use a pitchfork to just lift this material out of the way, and then, and then I scrape um, just with my hands. I just kind of clean off to where I get down to bare earth. Um, in this case, I was planting right into the existing grade, so I wasn't building up a mound. Um, once I do that, since these are one-gallon pots, I just use a post hole digger and sink the post hole digger in, um, pull up the material, drop the plant in drop the dirt on top and then stuff it all around the plant and uh and water it in that worked pretty well um that was fairly efficient i just planted i don't know 40 something plants in a couple hours two or three hours um, with a larger pot it's more of a project so ideally you'll have things uh planted beforehand um if you can but you know, we do what we, we do what we can. Um, it's easier to, you know, things like Mexican sunflower, I stick them in as cutting, so it's not an issue, but planting into deep mulch can be a little bit of a challenge. So um, that's a little tip if you want to try it. You know, just a regular post hole digger. Pretty, pretty much right on for a one gallon pot, if you can imagine that, versus digging a hole and putting the dirt in a bucket and blah, blah, blah. You can just hold it in the post hole digger and kind of pinch it and hold it in there while you're dropping the other thing in and then drop the dirt on top and uh, that worked pretty good for me um, anyway I got this all in got it watered 
and I gotta go because I'm going out of town. So that's it.